The song is Obinigwe, and in our very beautiful Igbo language, it means the one who reigns in the heavens. moments Baba you lift up my world I'm amazed by how you care I'm amazed you're so full of love You've been good from distant past And yet you're still doing good Obinigwe 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 This is a story of the girl that loved her alcohol You see, at the age of 19, I took my first sip of liquor and that, my friends, was the first sip into many of my troubles. I really loved my liquor. It gave me the permission to dress as sexily as I wanted. It gave me the permission to jump from one man's bed to the next in the pursuit of some kind of validation. It gave me the permission to move from one club to the next in the dead of the night in the name of having fun. I really loved my liquor. Fast forward 10 years down the lane. I was bound to get married to the wonderful man that God had brought my way. And this is how I know I loved my liquor. We'd go for dates, he'd order for his wine, I'd order for my Guinness. The waiter would serve us switched up, then we'd have to serve them switched up again. I really loved my liquor. Anyway, we did get married and off we went into the sunset bliss of happily ever after. Or not. You see, my husband began to get weary of my lifestyle. This was not what he had signed up for when he signed those vows, when he signed that marriage certificate, when he said, I do before God and man. He'd ask me, baby, when will you stop drinking? I'd say, soon. He'd ask, when? I'd say, soon. And then I'd sip my liquor. I really loved my liquor until I began to hate it. You see, my friends, unbeknownst to many people, I used to pray and first and ask God, when, when will I stop this drinking? I'd admire anyone who would tell me that they've never drunk or that they stopped drinking. But it seemed like the more I prayed, the more I drank. The more I prayed, the more I drank. Monday, 23rd of May. While every average adult in Kenya was out adulting, I walked to the nearest and my favorite liquor store, purchased a bottle of my favorite cheap liquor and sat to drink at 11 a.m. 
I would not be wrong to say that by evening, I was not soaring on the biblical eagle's wings. I was high as a kite. My husband got home and rang me because I was obviously not there to ask of my whereabouts. I said to him very dismissively, I'm around, not willing to disclose of my whereabouts. He'd have to tell us how he found me because the next thing I knew, he walked through the door of that shop, took one look at me and walked away. I remember sitting there in my drunkenness thinking, this man always comes to ruin my sherehe. <laughs> I obviously could not sit there any longer. I took my takeaway liquor and went home. In our home, there's this chilling, drinking, smoking spot that I heard and I went straight there. My husband soon came and told me, you no longer can drink in this room because this is where I pray. I looked at him and said, this is where I've always drunk and smoked and I will drink and smoke wherever I want in this house. <laughs> Allow me to laugh at this point. What ensued next was a very heated argument. You see, my friends, my husband, just a few weeks back, had aligned his life in Christ and he had begun to pray for me. I, on the other hand, was just a girl who had met God at 12 years of age and at the age of 17, I turned my back on him and refused to continue to give him lordship over my life. So a few days prior to this heated argument, I had received a realization and now in this heated argument, I had told my husband what I had realized. I said, you know what our problem is? Our problem is that I need to find God, you need to find God and then we can find each other. My husband had been trying to pull me away from the clothes of alcoholism while I was trying to invite him into the sherehe. We needed a middle ground. We needed Jesus. So my friends, within that heated argument, I, begin, I began to cry in frustration, in highness, asking God when, when, I remember my husband holding me at this point in my highness and while I was crying and the spirit of the living God Ruach Elohim descended upon my body I began to speak in tongues I began to weep and to confess my sins before God and Jesus my friends Jesus while I was busy clawing myself deeper and deeper into the abyss of alcoholism and debauchery Jesus with his pierced hands he reached out and pulled me out I had an encounter with Jesus the son of the most high God I woke up the next morning with a crazy hangover and I remember asking the spirit of God why couldn't you take this one also and I sat there wondering did that really happen did I just get filled by the spirit of God in my high stupor and I knew in my spirit, this was it. My friends, the Bible says in Isaiah 61 verse 1, that he came to set free the prisoners, to proclaim liberty to the captives. It tells me in Romans 6.18 that I am no longer a slave of sin, but a slave of righteousness. It tells me finally in John 8.36 that whosoever the Son sets free is free indeed. I'm amazed at what you do. I'm amazed you came through for me Even in my darkest moments 
Baba, you lit up my world. I'm amazed by how you care. I'm amazed you're so full of love. You've been good from this done past. And yet, you're still doing good. Oh, Bini Gwei. Oh, Bini Gwei. Oh, Bini Gwei. Every day you come, you come through for me. I had no essence, had no meaning, Lord. You showed up for me. What did I do to deserve this kind of love? What did I do to sit at your right hand? What did I do to deserve this kind of love? Worthy is the Lamb that sits upon the throne. Worthy is the Lamb that sits upon the throne. What did you do to deserve this kind of love? What did you do to sit at his right hand? What did you do? To deserve this kind of love I had no essence Had no meaning, Lord You showed up for me I had no standards Had no help, Lord You showed up for me Oh, Bini Gwei Thank you.